Hey everyone, today I want to show you how I do layered designs using my digital backgrounds. We'll start by opening the Procreate app and then I'm going to go into my brushes and I'm going to use one of my custom brush sets and I'm going to create a botanical style design here from my ferns and petal brush set. Now the first layer of this design, and it's going to be a multi-layered design, I'm using the black, the pure black, and I'm just adding in a few of the petals. These are going to be the ones that are going to sit at the front of the design. And then with each layer that I add, the petals will get fainter and fainter as if they're fading into the background. So I'm pretty happy with that one. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to put that layer underneath the one that I just did because everything is going to be receding away. So then I'm going to choose a medium gray and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in some more ferns and some more petals. Now these ones are going to lie behind the ones I've just done and I'm going to make them slightly larger than the ones that I did. The nice thing about these being on separate layers is they are visually overlapping each other but they aren't actually, I, if I change my mind on something I can easily take it out. And when I'm happy with that one I can go back in and create a new layer and this layer is going to lie underneath the two that I just did and I'm going to choose an even lighter gray. Now I have a set of grays in my palette, but if you want you can go into your color picker. There's different ways that you can choose using the disc, the classic, or the value, and you can change around the shade and the tone and the brightness so you can get the gray that you're looking for. You want each layer to be a little lighter than the one in front of it, so I'm just working with three layers, so I wanted a black, a medium gray, and a light gray. You don't want to go white, because white's not going to show up properly. It may not be showing up on my screen very well here because it is quite a bit lighter, but that is what you want and you'll be able to see it fine drawing it yourself. Once I've done my first pass, I can go back into the other layers and go back and use the grays that I used previously and add in more details if I feel there's areas that I want them to be in. So I want it to be a nice layered design with the different shades of gray and there'll be some overlapping, which is what I'm looking for. And if you find that there's areas that you don't really like how they look, like right here I don't like how that overlaps, so I'll find out what I did here with which layer. See here, I don't want that. So I can take those out and it doesn't affect the other layers, I can just erase that part out and redo it. There we go. I just want that one, I didn't like how it was overlapping with the other one on the same layer. The layers give you so much more flexibility in that you can work with different colors, putting them on different layers, and you can also place things behind other items and in between. It gives you a lot more of a dimensional look, and it also allows you to work in an undestructive way or non-destructive manner in that you can go into the separate layers and take things out without erasing big sections of your design. Of course you can create more than three layers but I did three layers so I did my first layer at the front with the black then I did a layer behind it with a medium gray and then I did the very back layer with a very light gray and all together they create a really nice overlapped layered design. Once I'm happy with the design I'll select all three and create a new group and then I'm going to duplicate the group for a backup and just turn that one off so I have those three layers still. And then the second group I'm going to flatten. I need them all to be on one layer so that I can go ahead and create my design. So I'm going to create a new layer, place it under the drawing and fill it with white. Now I will take my drawing and I will merge it down into the white. So now I have my design on a white background and it's all on one layer. This is going to be what I need to work with my digital background. Now to give you an idea how this is going to work, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to pick a color, um, just a solid color. So I'm going to try pink and I'm going to fill that layer with pink. Now go up to your top layer, your design layer, and we're going to choose a lighten category and screen blend mode. This is going to give you an idea of where I'm headed with this. Now you can see how all the different shades of gray are working with the pink background. This gives you a little better idea of what it looks like. It is a little bright on the screen. And now I'm going to bring in a background image from my camera roll and I'm just going to pick one that I painted and here it is. It popped right into the right place so that works well. So you want it to be lying underneath your design and you want your design layer to be in screen mode. It, that's the one that I used. Other blend modes will work but screen seems to give the nicest look. So now I can go back into that design if I want and tweak it. I can add in little pieces where I think there might be too much space. Now keeping in mind that the overlap isn't really going to work 
because I have it all on one layer now. So when I add the pieces in, they're still going to be all lying on top of each other as I add them in. And if I wanted to, I could put those extra pieces on a new layer of their own and then go back and rework the design with the pieces I added in. But this gives you a good idea of how the grays interact with a painted digital background. Go ahead and play around with the blend modes. Depending on what colors and tones are in your digital background, they'll all affect your work differently. And you can really end up with some very beautiful designs. So you can use solid colors in your background. You can paint your own backgrounds. You can find some beautiful ones online and you can check out my Etsy shop if you'd like to see some of mine. Now that's one method. I'm going to show you a second method using the same design and we're going to need our backup group for this one. So we're going to create three new layers at the top and we're going to put our design into those. So the first layer we're going to go in on our backup. We're going to select it. We're going to make sure our color chosen is white and we're going to choose the top layer and fill because that's the top layer from the original. Now because it's white on white so we better turn off our background color there. Now I can see it better. Go into the second layer, the middle layer, select it, go back up to the middle layer and fill it. Now you're still filling in white. You just have them on separate layers. So go back to the bottom layer, select the contents, go up to the bottom layer of your new set and fill. Now I know they're all white, but here's the trick. Go into the top layer, into the opacity and bring it down to about a 75%. Go into the second layer, bring your opacity down to about a 50%. And then you're going to go into the bottom layer and bring the opacity all the way down to about a 25%. So they're all white, but they're different opacities. Now let's put a background in so that we can see because it's probably pretty bright on my screen. So I'm going to turn on the pink. Now you get a better idea of what this looks like with the different opacities and you can change up the background color easily to get a different look to your design. So that's an easy way to get a similar idea only working with white colors instead. Now I'm going to go in and make my background black. If I want to tweak the opacities maybe I didn't really like the way some of them were coming through Black is my best background to work with while well, I work with the opacities of each layer. You could use more than three layers. I like three um, for this design worked quite well, but if you added more layers in, you just make their opacity different or perhaps you just want more layers so that you can add in different elements and decide whether you want them in your design or not. So my three layers were 75%, 50%, and 25%, and put together on top of the black background, you get a nice layered design. Now I want to bring in a digital background to get the effect I'm looking for in my design. So I'm going to go in and insert a photo from my camera roll, and I've chosen this green one that I painted in the Procreate app on the iPad. Fell right into place where I wanted it. So now I can go in if I want to, just going to shift this over slightly so I can see it with my layers panel up and I can go in and change the opacities of each of the layers so that I am sure that I get the look that I'm looking for. The nice thing with this design method is that I still have all my layers separated out so if I want to add in more detail I can just add another layer and I can choose where it lies whether it's on top or on the bottom and I can choose the opacity of it as well. The difference with this method is even though the layers are all separated apart, I can't use the blend modes with this one. It's really just a like a subtractive method. It creates these nice translucent layers, almost if it's taking away part of your digital background. Whereas the other method, you can use all the blend modes with it. But they both come up with some really fun and interesting designs. Thanks so much for joining me today. And if you've enjoyed these tutorials, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything that's coming up. And if you want to check out the brushes that I used in the class today, there's a link to my Etsy shop in the description below. Have fun creating.